Okay, everyone, I wanted to show you some of the things you're going to need in order to do this technique, besides, of course, your oils and your lye. So I'm going to move you down here, and I can show you how I set up for this. Basically, of course, you're going to need a slab mold. This technique works best in a mold like this uh, because it gives you more movement when you blow the soap. Then I recommend putting your straw in a jar or a glass so that when you go ahead to use the straw and you have your gloves on, you don't get lye or soap batter close to your mouth. You can grab it right at the rim and pull it out and put it back every time. That way you don't risk getting any, anything on your lips. I have my regular pitchers, which I'm going to put my colors, which I'm going to use micas for this today. Um, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of oils from my base. Then what I'm going to do when I actually pour is I will pour that batter off into these cups because with these cups I can squeeze them and make a little pouring spout and they fit easily down into my mold so that I can place closely my colors one on top of the other. And then of course we have our gloves and our safety goggles. Um, having the, the goggles is going to become important because you're going to be leaning down on top of the soap. Um, so if it does splash up, you definitely want to make sure that your eyes are protected as best you can. The other thing I'm going to be doing is pulling my hair back because I have long hair and I suggest anyone who has any length to their hair, pull it away from your face because you really don't want to get lie on your hair. Okay, so we're get ready to get started. What I have done is uh, I have taken my lye water down to room temperature. My oils are at room temperature. I did add some sodium lactate to my lye water and also some kaolin clay to my oils. The consistency for this needs to be extremely fluid because we're going to be layering. So as you can see, I've got really no trace whatsoever. I just went to emulsification, which basically is about two or three bursts at about 20 seconds each just to mix so that there's no separation of oil on top of your batter. Like I said, this needs to stay fluid the whole time. I wanted to show you, this is the straw I'm gonna be using. It's just a star, uh, Starbucks straw. Um, you can use a variety. The larger, the more volume of air you're going to get, the thinner, the less volume. So you can play around with it and decide you can use multiple straws at one time but for today's purposes I'm just going to use the one straw. So let's get ready to mix our colors. What I have here are my micas that I have dispersed in some oil from my batter. I like to do it that way. You don't have to. It's whatever works for you. I have some white. I have a purple. I have green and I have a pink. Now what I've done is added a little bit of neon to each one of these colors to just brighten it up some more. So let's get started. I'm going to basically try and separate this as best I can in equal parts for the colors and a little bit less for the white. Uh, we are going to use the white as a base in the bottom of the mold in order to give more fluid movement to the colors that we're gonna put on top. If you were to just do it dry, it's, you'll notice that it's a little bit harder to get the soap to move the way you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this to about halfway in my pitcher for my white because I'm not going to use as much in the full soap as I will um, using a big big part of it in the bottom. Now once I've mixed my batter, I don't touch my stick blender again. Everything is going to be blended by hand from here on out because again we need to stay fluid. Almost there. And a little more in here. Now 
Now today I'm using micas. Uh, you can do this with natural colorants as well. It's for my purposes, I wanted to use the micas. I wanted a lot more contrast so that you can actually see the movement in the soap. The other thing I will say is the fragrance oil that I have chosen is one that I have worked with a lot and I know exactly how it's going to behave. We'll just put the rest of that in there. You want something that is not going to accelerate, that is not going to cause any rising. You want to know it extremely well because like I said, this process takes a while so you need as much time with a fluid batter as you can possibly get. I'm going to mix these colors up. Now when I disperse in my oils, what I use is this little um, frother. Um, I basically put some oil from my base oils down in the bottom on top of my mica or whatever colorant that I'm using and then I use that little frother to mix it very, very well. So it makes it, for me, easier to disperse into my batter doesn't seem to take me as long to get these mixed up. And as you can see, I pulled my hair up out of my way. Um, I did put an apron on because I'm a messy soaper. And this tends to be a little messy because you are blowing the soap everywhere. So I've also put down wax paper. It just makes it easier to cover um, my surface that way and easier to clean up in the end. Go making a big mess. And also, I don't add my fragrance oil to right um, till I'm ready to pour. That way, even if I have worked with it, if it seems to have a reaction with a particular color, I can catch it um, and I haven't ruined my entire batch. Okay, now that everything is mixed together, tidy this up a little bit. And now we have our cups. We're going to pour some of each color off into our cups because like I said earlier this makes it much easier to pour inside your bowl.
All right. And we're ready. I'm going to put some colors on this side and some colors on this side. First thing we're going to start with is our base. And I'm going to take that white. I'm just going to pour a layer. Enough to cover the bottom of our mold. Help that along a little. It's just a thin layer, but like I said, it's actually going to give us a place for the soap to actually float into. And what I want you to do is come down close. You really don't want to break through. You want to put a color, and then I'm going to grab my straw, like I said earlier, down by the rim of the jar, so that way it's not my gloves aren't close to my mouth. And then I place it right back in the jar. That way I always grab it in the right spot. And now we're going to go to our second color. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, how hard you blow, and if you move the straw along, it'll help drag that color out if you want to do that. If you get in the center and you blow in and blow good and hard, and it will actually push the soap a little bit further and give you a little more dramatic effect. If you blow light, the soap is not going to travel as far, so it's going to stay closer to the center. So depending on what you're going for, you can design it however you like. Um, as we go along and the soap builds up, it's going to be a little... You're going to have to blow a little harder to keep the soap moving because as it, the depth gets higher, the, the more difficult it is to move the soap. It's not terribly difficult, but it does get more difficult. Now, if you like, you can do two colors at once. I always start off doing one, um, but as you go, this can get a little tedious, so if you want to try doing two or even maybe three uh, colors at a time, feel free. You can do that.
pencil and the third color just so you can see you can do it that way as well if you'd like Now what I did there was bring more of the color this way because we were tending to get a lot more color up towards the top. And that's what's really great about this is that you can do that. You can move your color a little bit and spread it so that you're getting a little more even coverage along the way. just going to keep doing this till we fill this mold up. What I love about this technique the most is the fact that you can actually see it change. With most soap, when you pour it, you don't know what's going on. You can't see inside the soap. With this particular technique, you can actually see it transform and make changes if you choose. Um, you know, you may decide, oh, well, maybe I'll put a color over here or over here. You can do that with this technique. And like I said, it's also too, you can see it and go, well, you know what? I really like that, but I think I want some smaller. You know, lines in there and switch your straw out. Try a different one. See if that works better for you. And even though I waited and put my fragrance oil in last, it still is starting to thicken a little. It's still workable um, in my colors, but again, this is the reason why I do that, because if I had put it in my oils at this point, 
it would be way too thick to do this technique. So just keep that in mind, even if you know that fragrance oil, like I know this one I've used a lot, um, it, it can do that with certain colors. So you wanna keep that in mind. So what I don't like is how this is starting to migrate back here. So what I love about this technique is the fact that it is a paint technique. So we can basically move our colors a little back towards the middle. And then by simply blowing, break up this blotch of color here. You are going to get air bubbles with this because you are blowing air into the soap. Don't worry about it. Um, we are gonna bang this down at the end, so that'll help alleviate a lot of those bubbles. workable um, I still have to stir it quite a bit um, but it's not so thick that it, I think it's going to be an issue I think we're going to be all right
think what I might do here to speed the process is put all of my colors and show you that you can do that as well. And as you can see, it is getting, as it's getting thicker, it's getting a little harder. I'm having to blow a little bit harder each time. Get some more color.
higher we get, the more it splashes, and that's why I said it was important for you to make sure that your hair was pulled back and that your glasses are on, because it, it will splash out, and it could possibly splash back on you. So please be very careful in doing this as well.